I have started gaming again and wanted to upgrade my old rig with new RGB, RAM, and storage. Symptoms, will not post or display at all. I have reseated with one dim, checked all wiring, and switched power supply, but no luck. All the fans start spinning, the RGB lights up, and the pump is on. There is no OS on the new drive as I wanted it to post before I installed Windows. Honestly, don't know what to do, and I don't have any other parts to test with. This is that viewer's broken gaming PC. We're, 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 gonna, we're gonna try to fix it. So this is a modest, older system, but nothing wrong with this combination of hardware off the top. It does have a KB Lake Core i5-7600K in it. It does have a GTX 1080 with a custom backplate, which I love, by the way. It does have two terabytes of NVMe storage. It has an 850-watt gold modular power supply from Thermaltake, and it has 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance RGB DDR4. This is still a great 1080p gaming PC, albeit with some scaled back settings and some of the newer titles out there. However, the fact that it does not post Post is at least mildly concerning. It could be a number of reasons why maybe the BIOS is not compatible anymore. Maybe it's just a corrupt BIOS. Maybe there's an issue with the graphics card. Maybe a DIMM isn't seated properly. Maybe you have a dead DIMM, dead memory channel. There's just so many different things it could be if a no post is the one symptom you have. So uh, we're gonna have to start checking things off one by one, starting first with powering this on. Are you ready? Stay with me. If you're sick of seeing that same Activate Windows watermark over and over, head on over to VIP SCD Key, where they have Windows 10 and 11 Pro OEM keys at a fraction of the price of retail. Just use the secure payment method like PayPal, enter your product key into your PC settings window, and say goodbye to the watermark. And be sure to use your offer code SKGS for that so sweet discount. Let's not beat around the bush. We're just gonna try uh, firing it up straight away here. Now, those who are new, uh, I have never turned the system on before. I have no idea what I'm getting myself into. For all we know, there could be nothing wrong with this. So we're gonna find out together here. Power on. Okay, everything looks and sounds healthy so far. It powered off. Maybe training memory. I didn't see a doctor debug or any debug LEDs of any kind on this board. It's a Z270 killer. So unfortunately we're going into this in the dark. This is very, very suspicious. No picture. That's um, consistent with what we were told. Now something I noticed right away, we are in the wrong slots for memory. It should be slots two and four. Most boards, I'll confirm this with this board's manual online. But uh, yeah, we need to move each of these dims one slot to the right. And yep, sure enough, priority one should be populating A2 and B2. Having your dims in the wrong slots shouldn't in theory prevent a system from posting, but I've seen weirder before. This will also give us a chance to reseat memory, which could also be the culprit but we've still got nothing. Now I was looking to clear the CMOS next. You can see the battery here. We can take this out for a couple minutes just for good measure, or we can jump these pins. Now this admittedly is a bit old school, but you can see the pin array actually has uh, two different configurations. So we have a normal config, the two pins on the left need to be jumped, and to reset the CMOS, the two pins on the right need to be jumped. The issue is I don't see the physical jumper connecting the two pins on the left for a normal CMOS status. That very well could be the reason why the system isn't posting. Now this will be a bit strange to pull off, but I'm going to physically jump the two pins on the left with my screwdriver and then power the system on just to rule that out. It might just be that this board doesn't need a jumper on the left two pins, but I'm gonna hold it here and see if we get any change in the computer's behavior. It should shut off, yeah, which it did before. Uh, it seems to be a recurring theme for whatever reason. And at this point, we'd hope it would post, but I don't think it will. So now we're gonna try clearing the CMOS with the two rightmost pins. A few moments later. <sighs> but still, nothing. Things are about to get pretty intense. We are going to strip everything non-vital from this platform. Yes, including the graphics card, since we should have integrated graphics with this Core i5. I want to isolate the motherboard, the RAM, the CPU, and the power supply. Let's see if we still get a no post issue. And if we do, well, at least we know it's one of those four. I want to be careful with this custom back plate. I think it's, is it magnetized? Oh no, it's adhesive, okay. And out you come. Come on now. There we go. Literally everything non-vital is now disconnected with the exception of one fan, just because I, I want an indicator that things actually are powered on. I'll now have to jump things since we removed the front panel. This should roll out the power, uh, power switch, I should say, as in 
issue in the process. Okay, so we're still getting the blinking red LEDs under the chipset heatsink, which I think is odd. Um, maybe that's trying to tell us something. It just, it doesn't want to post. Even on integrated graphics, we get, we get nothing on screen here. It's, um, and this is an interesting one. I think I'm gonna try RAM next. We'll swap the uh, two DIMMs in here with a single known and working DIMM. We'll try every slot. Maybe we have a dead memory channel. Also, just FYI, nothing physically apparent that could be wrong with either of these modules. Known working four gig DIMM is in here. And remember, this could be a memory channel issue. So we're gonna try multiple slots to rule that out. I have reconnected the pump and fan headers simply because I don't want the system overheating <laughs> while we're waiting for things to post but I, uh, I don't have high hopes for this either. To me, this just doesn't, this doesn't feel like a memory issue. The fact that it continues to turn off randomly and then fire back up and then we get that random red blinking set of LEDs under the chipset. It's just, it's very strange behavior. I feel like the board's trying to tell us something. Yes, I know I did forget to remove this earlier. I went through and retested each slot though without the drive installed and still the same symptom. Now here's something else interesting. When I power this system on, you can see for a split second, white LED and then immediately flashes to red blinking. I think that this is the motherboard's way of telling us there's something seriously wrong with what's still connected here. Probably CPU related if I had to guess, maybe something dirty from the power supply, but I'd wager maybe too much pressure uh, mounted over the cooler or there's a bent missing pin, something like that. It's just, this, this is weird. Uh, th this is not normal. Meanwhile. Uh, hello, power switch. What on earth is going on? It was just sitting here. Now it's not turning on at all. Ugh. This just keeps getting worse. Okay, I'm rolling out this power supply quick and easy. Time to whip out our trusty fanless night jar unit. The 24 pin and eight pin EPS are wired up, still flashing red over the chipset. Let's see. It's still not powering on? Yo, what happened? We're gonna very carefully remove this CPU. I'm gonna give it a quick cleaning. There was a lot of thermal paste on this. And would you look at that? A clean 7600K, no issues at all, no blemishes, no uh, thermal paste covering any of these pads here. The chip otherwise looks really good. And now for the other half of this equation, the socket. Uh, first glance looks okay. Actually, hold on, we've got something right there. I think that's dust though. Ooh, no, I take that back. That is a bent pin. We're uh, we're gonna need to remove this motherboard. The question is though, were we too late? By the time we noticed this bent pin, the system stopped powering on. Now to fix these bent pins, I like to use a sewing needle. I don't have one currently, so I'm going to use a staple. I don't like using anything larger than this because, uh, well, you could potentially damage other pins around the one you're trying to work on. Oh, wow, okay. I think, uh, I think I was wrong about this. It looks like that pin is broken already because I can't get it long enough. I can't get it to reach where the others on that line do, which means it's not gonna make contact with the pad. So we're, we're kind of just, we're not really solving the problem here. And you can see from this angle especially, it looks like there's a lot of fuzz in this socket, like just like small strands of hair or dust. I'm not sure what it's doing here. So I just scooped up one there. There's a lot more of it here. This is unfortunately as good as I can get it. Cleaned it up a lot, but uh, we did still have that one bent pin that is just, it looks like a piece of it's missing. There's just not enough material there to get it back into position with the other pins in that line. So I'm afraid it's not gonna make proper contact and uh, that we might still have the symptom we were seeing earlier with this board, which means we're probably gonna have to replace this. Now, if you recall from the owner's description, one of the things he replaced was the CPU cooler, which means he was probably somewhere around the socket at some point installing things. I asked him if he removed the CPU in that process and the off chance maybe he was, I don't know, cleaning underneath the socket or something. I'm not sure why you'd need to do that, but 
Apparently he did, which is likely when all of this went down. Obviously, the viewer is not on trial here, whether it was by accident or heck, even intentional. My job is just to fix things. I just wanted to get that context out there for you all, just in case you were having similar issues. Um, it took me a little bit to kind of hone in on the socket itself. I didn't suspect that was what was wrong, but um, now that we have the clarity about what was touched when things were upgraded, I think it makes more sense that this was the problem. So here we are with his original CPU back in the socket. I don't suspect his RAM has any issues at all. I've got both them in those slots there. Hopefully we at least get power again like we were before. Uh, I actually have a replacement CPU here, but it's a weaker one than what he has. It's a 6500, so a previous generation. It's a locked Core i5. I'd prefer not to uh, swap his out with this. So if we do suspect that his chip is also defective, we can at least use this to test, but I'm probably probably going to order either an exact match or something slightly better than that, maybe a 7700 if the CPU is broken. So let's go ahead and try powering this on. I apologize, I'm not uh, usually this messy, but there's a lot going on here. So we're still getting the flickering red LEDs, so uh, maybe the form was right, the board just does this by default. Let's go ahead and try jumping the power pins. Now I don't have, oh that's, oh wow we get lights. Okay, now I don't have a CPU cooler on. That's a post. That's a post right there. I'll only be able to show this for a few seconds because we don't have a cooler attached, but uh, this thing boots straight up and in, yeah, look at that. In like half a second, it posts. That's awesome. Okay, so that's way further than where we were before. So I'll admit I uh, got a bit overzealous. I decided to throw everything back into the original case, all the original components. This isn't something you'd want to do typically as a troubleshooter, but uh, I didn't really think anything else was wrong with this rig based on the original symptom. I didn't think the graphics card was defective or that obviously his RAM had issues because we had just verified that those were working in the makeshift test bench. And wouldn't you know it, it happened to post on the first try. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it did it. Bend pins. Bend pins. All the system needed was a quick fan curve tweak in the BIOS and an operating system, which the owner said he would take care of once we got the system up and running. Now, it isn't all sunshine and rainbows. I'm not entirely sure how long this is going to hold. I'm frankly surprised it even works. And you didn't see this on camera. It did take a few tries before the motherboard finally started taking to the CPU and booting up without issue. I have power cycled it a dozen times or so, and every single time it throws us straight to this splash page here about the operating system, which is great. Um, I, I, this is about as far as I can really go without replacing the motherboard, which was actually the next thing I was willing to do. The issue is buying a part on eBay that's used uh, comes with its own risks. Obviously, you gotta wait several days, and it might not actually work by the time it does get here. So I'm confident enough in this that I'm willing to send it back home to the viewer, but if something like this happens again, he'll know where to reach me. And that's the story of how a gaming PC was saved by a single staple, the real hero. Now, before we end this one, there is one final piece of business to take care of. That, my friends, is another surprise giveaway. And we'll be handling things exactly as we have recently. We'll be randomly selecting a comment from the latest published video as of time of filming this one. That most recent video is when 40 FPS doesn't cut it. That's the Starfield themed gaming PC downstairs. We're going to randomly select a comment from the video link using our comment picker website. To be clear, this isn't our website, but it's the one we like to use because it's simple. All we need to do here is paste our video link. And look at that, there are 365 unique comments. Time to go, click start. And the winner is Dornan Ben. And his comment was, that Starfield box of goodies is amazing. Don't think I've ever seen anything close to how the designs are. <laughs> you know, it'd be funny if it was like a comment just taking a dump on me. And I have, like, I'd literally have to read that right here to you all. But uh, thanks Dornan Ben for being kind, <laughs> you have won an RX 6600, my friend. And I'm gonna ship that personally to you from my Amazon account. I actually have several of those cards on hand because I think they're such great values. Hopefully you can put it to some good use. There we go, reply sent and rule of thumb, he's gonna have several days to respond to this in order to claim his prize. If he doesn't, 24 hours after this video that you're watching now is published, then we'll select somebody else at random and you'll see a pinned comment at the top of this video letting you know the current state of things. 
things. But uh, don't worry, if you didn't win this one, there are plenty more on the way. Build better and smarter with the Corsair IQ Link ecosystem, a leap forward in PC building aimed at reducing cable clutter and maximizing hardware compatibility. Run a single controller with the IQ system hub and manage all of your R2B devices through revamp software. The hub fits almost anywhere in your case and allows for up to seven connected devices in a single cable design spanning across fans, coolers, power supplies, cases, and more from Corsair. Click the link below to learn more. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you have not already, especially if you want to be prepared for giveaways like the one you just saw. And stay tuned for what's to come. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.